also painted the wires black so it's not so shiny. Bent the tips using a plier so I have this hook. I can put this wire inside the holes in the frame. Full 360 view. So today we're going to take a look at the Class 1 Modelworks GSC Heavy Duty Flat Car with the reporting mark LNEL, the Lucas Oil Rail Line in Indiana. So let's get started here in the front. So this is the A end of the car. Over on top we have the handbrake standing up, grab irons on the side, an airline hose with a painted tip. It comes with a metal knuckle coupler which looks pretty nice and shiny. On the corners of the car there is a little indent circle here and the left has a couple of cut lever. There also is some fine printed stenciling, lettering over here and the airline hose is pretty detailed. First time I've seen this hook thing painted. Now the car is slightly crooked off to one side. Interesting enough, the coupler seems to be level though. So I emailed Class 1 Model Works and they told me it could be a brake line that's not correctly inside the hole, but on my model it seems fine. So I unscrewed the bogies and the frame and it turns out the frame is actually crooked. You can see it does go up on the right side and apparently it's supposed to look like this. Moving along to the side, we have the stirrup step and a grab iron. There's some text saying A end. Then we got some molded in details, a release rod for the air brake system, and this car uses a three axle bogey. You can see some plumbing detail going along the sides, and there is an A style jacking pad. So in the bogey, you can see some springs and the bearing caps are actually different styles. We got hexagon and triangular, a little molding on top. And these are rotating bearing caps, so they are animated when it moves. The middle axle appears to be looser than the other one, so it does wiggle a bit. And there also are brake pads on the ends of the bogey. Over here we have the reporting mark, the car number, some dimension information, then it says red and ready, some kind of slogan here, and this small box of text is actually legible even though it's tiny. And here's the other end of the car, it looks similar but on this side it has a retaining valve and this ladder. So for the B end of the car it looks pretty much exactly the same as the front just the other way around. So here's a view of it from the other side, again it's pretty much the same thing, maybe the only difference is the spacing of the notches in the air brake system. It does align a little bit different from the other side and on this corner we have a ladder yet again. So now to review the top. So the flat car I got has a graded deck so it has these holes with grates in them so you can see through to the inside. They do come in kind of weird shapes which I don't know why someone explained to me why that is. There also are these three panels in the middle. Then the deck drops down in the middle to add additional height clearance. Then we have some rounded rectangular holes with some wire in the inside. There's tiny holes in the perimeter and some more holes in the middle to tie things down and they kind of are in an irregular pattern so the spacing is kind of varied. Then on the other end, the deck is pretty much the same thing as the front one. It's just rotated 180 degrees. All right, so now let's go check out the bottom. Here we got an air reservoir tank on this side, some air brake detail, some triangular frames on the bogies. And it was surprising that the bogey actually rotates on this screw here. It's off center. I'm not sure if that's prototypical or not, or maybe they just did it to run the car better. The sides are also different. This one's triangular while this one is straight. Then moving along in the middle, there's a bunch of holes there. And here's the other side. So I also got this large modern transformer load. It's actually pretty huge at two and a half inches. You can see there's a lot of detail here with some piping wires, rivets, a pair of tanks. On the top we have some vent holes here and apparently the ones on the outer edges are angled outwards. So this model is made using cast resin so it's actually quite light despite its size. Definitely a lot of detail here. Here's a look at the bottom and the other side. And there are some holes for the strap down wires. And here's a SD70 ACE next to it just for scale. You can see it is even taller than the locomotive and much wider as well. So here's how the transformer looks like on the GSC flat car. It's quite a big load. There also is a separate component you can add and a barrel. It also comes with some tie down cable wire which you'll have to unwrap. They come in a metallic shiny color and it comes in a pack of nine. Now I did have to straighten them out. <laughs> So you can see the bottom ones I straightened out, compare that with the top ones. 
I also painted the wires black so it's not so shiny. Bent the tips using a plier so I have this hook. I can put this wire inside the holes in the frame. You have to cut it pretty short and you want to curve the end so it fits better. You do have to twist and rotate it a little bit but eventually you'll come out with this. The good thing about this method is that it's quite adjustable. So here's how the car looks like when it's fully mounted. So I did add in a little bit of coloring just to make the model a little more realistic. I emailed Class 1 Model Works and they sent me this reference photo to help me decorate it. So I painted these side tanks silver as well as these knobs over here and I painted these valves red. Now the model is actually a little bit different from the reference photos so I did have to custom paint some areas. I also painted the knobs on this side and this little control panel thing here. And these pipe lids red just to add a little more color. Now on the other side I thought it would look quite boring here because it's empty so I just glued back in this component. So to tie down the load I added two wires on each corner and I glued them down on the deck surface. Now apparently they say in the prototype they actually drilled through the deck but I didn't really want to damage my car so it's just temporarily glued them down with the aid of Elmer's glue. The glue dries clear but if you do see marks from far away honestly you can't even tell it's there. So here I just wanted to show you a full 360 view of the car without zooming in so you guys can have an idea of how this would look like. And if you're skilled, you could probably do a lot better than me. I also painted the drum black and added it on the end. So I almost forgot to mention the Class 1 Model Works, their boxes open up like this so you can see a display in the front. And they also give you this drawing of the car which is detailed. The lid is also magnetic. Pretty cool feature. So for my final thoughts on the Class 1 Model Works GSC Heavy Duty Flat Car. It's a pretty well detailed model, fine legible printing, see-through grills, painted train line hoses, rotating bearing caps. It rolls pretty well and the presentation with the box flap is unique. And it's cool drawing. I was actually surprised on how it's placed diagonally inside the packaging. I thought it was messed up and rolled over, but apparently it's just like that. However, this model is not perfect. As you saw in the beginning, my car had a bent metal frame, causing it to lean to one side, which may contribute to it being 
game wobbling when the load is on the car. They just released a video of the car bending, so it's probably an issue with the design or manufacturing process. The model also has some paint chipping in some areas so you can see the metal underneath. They are a relatively new model railroad manufacturer and this is only their second model, the first being the Battleship Well car. So mistakes are expected. Hopefully in the future they can improve and maybe get up there with scale chains in Athens level, but right now they're not quite there yet. However, they do have some amazing customer service. They respond very quickly to your emails. I just sent in my flat car so it can be replaced and they did send me a shipping label. As for the transformer load, it is quite detailed and looks cool. However, you do have to paint it yourself. It does come with this one light gray colored paint, but it will be probably better if it was a shade darker. Besides military stuff, this is my first time making a custom load, so it was quite a learning experience. I should also mention it's quite light, so if you want to be more realistic, I would add some weight on the inside of it so it's more stable and not wobble around. I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do, hit the like button down below, subscribe if you had it ready, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Also in Japan, I got one of these. It's a Kato expanding track, so basically you can expand to a custom length. And here's how the mechanism works from the bottom. It's a pretty new Kato accessory, and the extra rails just go off to the sides. And when it's retracted, you can see there's a gap underneath the rails. I also got these HO scale foxes from Hobby Center Kato. It's a model train store in Tokyo, Japan, which I just made a video on, so go check it out. So I forgot to cut off the tape at the bottom, so that's why that happened. But you get this pretty nice pack of foxes. And to take them out, you just pull it from the back, and you're supposed to slide it all down, although I kind of messed up there. So here are all the foxes. You can see they're doing a lot of poses. And since they're in HO scale, you can combine it with your HO scale layouts. This one's carrying a fish or something. All of these are pretty cute. There also is this fox statue with this red bib. And apparently in Japan, I learned they are a big deal. In Kyoto, the place with like 10,000 tour gates, apparently that's dedicated to Inari, the god of rice, and their messenger are foxes. So there's like hundreds of fox statues like this with these red bibs. As someone who likes foxes and is named after Crafty Fox, I thought that was a pretty cool thing.